Hey guys, welcome to another web course. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at Memcached. Now, this isn't the typical type of video or technology that I usually work with on my channel, but I wanted to take a break from the usual JavaScript and web programming, and I'm going to be expanding the technologies that I work with on my channel. So, hopefully, you guys enjoy. And this actually it comes from uh, part of my full stack web development course with Eduonix, which has over 20 different web technologies. And I'll be putting a link in the description as soon as that's released. So Memcached is defined as a high performance object caching system. And it's generic in nature, but it's intended to speed up dynamic web applications. So you can use it with uh, many many different languages PHP, Perl, Python, um, Ruby, just uh, pretty much any popular programming language and basically it, it stores key value pairs in memory it's not classified as a database it doesn't persist the data to disk at least by default and it just stores key value pairs one of the most typical uses for memcached is let's say we have a PHP uh, application and we have a MySQL database we may want to fetch data from the database and store it in store the results in memcached stored in memory so that we have access to it faster okay it speeds up uh, our web application we, we may want to just cache web pages which I'll show you how to do alright so what we'll do in this video we're going to install it we're going to uh, connect to memcache using telnet and we can set our key value pairs from there I'll also show you some other commands uh, we're going to use something called lib memcached tools which is uh, a set of command line tools that we can use to do different things uh, manage our key value pairs and so on and then I'm going to show you how to use it with Python okay we'll use it in the Python command line and then I'll show you how to use it with PHP we'll create a quick PHP script that will uh, cache a web page. I'm not going to get into databases because I don't, I don't want this to take up too much time. Uh, I may make a separate video on that, but I'm not sure. All right, so we're going to dive in and install memcached. Now I'm going to use my um, apt-get package manager. So we're going to run sudos because we want to run it as administrator, and then apt-get install memcached. Okay, now that went really quick because I already have it installed. Yours may take a little longer. All right, so we have it installed. Now I just want to run a command here. I want to run this ps ef grep i memc. And this just gives us some information. And you can see right here that 64 megabytes of memory is being allocated to memcached, all right, which should be plenty. Um, it's also running on our local host, so this is our loopback address, 127001, and it's also running on port 11211. Okay, so what we can do is connect through Telnet. We'll say Telnet, local host, port 11211, and now we're connected. All right, so we can start running commands from here. So the first command I want to run is stats. Now this gives us a whole bunch of info on our memcache. All right, now I don't know what all this stuff means. I'm not really an expert, but you can see that it has the uptime. It has um, all these zeros here have to do with our key value pairs. So this would be how many times we ran get on, on a key value pair, how many times we ran set, how many hits we got, so this get hits, how many misses. So if we try to get a key value pair that's not there, that'll get added to this get misses. Same thing with the delete misses and delete hits. Um, this is how many times we get uh, increment hits and misses, decrement, um, what else? Tells us the bytes written, the bytes read, current items. Okay, so this is going to be the current uh, number of key value pairs that we have stored the total items and that's pretty much it I'm not sure what a lot of this other stuff means um, so that we can just check uh, you know check the status of our memcache server and so on so let's go ahead and set a key value pair so we're gonna run set and let's just say foo now this is gonna take in a couple parameters 
we're going to have to set our flags. Now, I'm not going to set any flags, so we're going to put a zero. And then the next one is going to be the expiration time. When do we want this value to expire? So I'm going to say 3600, which is an hour. It goes by seconds. All right. And then we also need to specify the number of bytes for this particular key value pair. So we're going to say three. Now it's now we need to enter the value. So I'm going to say bar. All right. So we now have a key value pair. The key is foo. Uh, the value is bar. Now we can get that by saying get foo and it gives us bar. Now if we run stats again and we go up here, you can see that we have one get now and we have one set. Okay, we have one get hits. We still have zero misses because we haven't ran a get on something that's not there. Um, we have no deletes. And let's see if we go to current items, you see we have one current item one total item. Now if we want to delete this, we can just simply say delete foo. All right, deleted, then we'll run actually let's do get. Okay, so we get nothing back. Now we'll run stats. And if we look at current items, we have 0, but total items still has 1. So even if you delete the key value pair, it's still going to be in this total items until you clear the until you um reset the the server all right uh, let's go back up here and now you'll see we have get misses one we have delete hits one as well because we deleted foo all right so let's look at some other commands we also have add and the only difference between add and set is that if something's already there and you run add it's not going to replace it set will all right so let's create uh, a key called num and we'll say no flags. We'll set it for uh, 3600. And for bytes, we'll say two. All right. And then we'll just put, let's say, 50. All right. So now we have 50 stored. If we say get num, that gives us 50. And we also have, we're able to append and prepend. So if we say append to num, zero flags. 3600 and then the bytes will be 2 and let's say 25. So now if we do get num, we get 5025. We can also do prepend 0 3600 2 Oops, we need to put in num 3600 2 and let's put 44. All right, so now if we do get num, it gives us that. We also have a replace command, which will replace the whole thing. So we'll say replace num 3600 2, and let's make it 40. Okay, so get num gives us 40. We can also increment it by saying incur num, and let's do it by 2. Now it's 42 decrement it as well two and now it's back to 40 all right so those are just very basic commands uh, now if we have a bunch of values and we want to clear everything out we can simply do flush underscore all that's going to get rid of everything so if I say get num there's nothing there okay we run stats you'll see we still have current uh, total items five but the current items is zero all right and if we go up here, we now have seven gets, five sets, five hits, two misses. Okay, so it gives us um, complete statistics on the data that we have in memory. Now, if we want to reset everything, let's go ahead and type in quit to get out of Telnet. We can run slash etc init.d slash memcached and then restart. Put in our password and that will restart everything. So if we go back into Telnet and we do stats, you'll see that total items is now cleared. Everything is cleared out. All right. So let's get out of Telnet and we're going to install something called lib memcache tools. So let's do sudo lib memcached-tools. Or maybe that's not it. Um, 
lib memcache tools. Oh god, I forgot the apt get install. <laughs> All right, so let's uh say sudo apt get install memcached dash tools. Okay, say yes. All right. So this comes with uh, a bunch of commands, a bunch of different tools. So the first one we're going to look at is memcstat. All right. Now all of these start with memc. Now if we just run that, it's going to say no servers provided. So we're going to provide dash dash servers and then localhost. All right. And notice that it gives us the same exact thing that the stats command gave us in telnet. All right. So we can check uptime check all our gets and sets and all that all right so just an alternative way to do it now if we want to dump everything that uh, that we have stored we can use memc dump say servers local host and you can see we don't have anything all right so let's open up another command line or another terminal and let's connect to telnet through here. And let's go ahead and set foo 0 3600 uh, 3. Then we'll say bar. All right. And then let's go over here and run memc dump again. And you can see we get foo. Okay. It gives us all of our keys. If we set another one. We'll do um, set name and zero thirty six hundred four, and we'll set Brad. Okay, so if we run the dump again, we get name and foo. Now, if we want to get a value, we can use memccat dash dash servers local host and then the key that we want to find so let's say name and that gives us Brad okay if we do foo that gives us bar if we want to remove one of these we can do that with uh, memcrm say servers local host and let's remove name all right so now if we do where is it uh, memc cat on name we get error on name not found so now I'm going to uh, just clear this out and then I'm going to make a directory and I'll just call it test and I'm going to cd into test and what I want to do is generate uh, I want to generate a thousand files and then what I want to do is add to our memcached each file name as the key and then the whatever's in the file as the value so we can generate these by doing a for loop we'll say for i in and we're going to put a couple back ticks and then seq we want 1000 files all right then we're going to say do do echo um, money sign I and we're gonna call these files a book and then whatever the number okay whatever that iteration so we'll put money sign I and then done all right so now if we do LS you'll see that we have all these files okay we have a thousand files we can open it in the um, file manager see we have this test and we have the files and if we open one up you'll see that we just have whatever the number is in that file so we want the name as the key and we want the the content as the value so to do that there's there's a, uh, a command called memc uh, what is it memccp so let's do let's do memccp and we'll say dash dash servers localhost and let's say book and then star all right so now if we do a dump we'll do memc dump c 
servers, local host. Uh, so that didn't work. Hmm. Let's do memc stat. All right, so if we look in, oh, it did work. Current items, 1,001. So why didn't they dump? Oh, there we go. I must have messed up the command. Okay, so now we have all of these uh, key value pairs. And we should be able to get, let's say, uh, memc cat local host and we can say book let's say uh, 200 and that gives us 200 all right if we do we can do memc cat book and we could say one through nine and that gives us one through nine all right so my only point in doing this is just to just show you that we can and it gives us something to work with if you want to mess around with the key value pairs. All right, obviously we can access these from Telnet as well. If we say get book 44 or 444, it gives us that back. All right, so let's get out of this. We're gonna quit the Telnet interface and let's um, cd dot dot out of test and clear this up. And now we're gonna work with Python. So if you're using Linux Ubuntu, you should have Python installed. Let's say Python dash dash version. Okay, so I get version 2.7.12 installed. Now we have to install the uh, Python memcached package. So let's do sudo apt get install Python dash memcached. Uh, unable to locate package. Hmm. Oh, it's, you know what, there's no D on the end. It's just memcache. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and run the Python CLI by just saying Python. All right, so you can see that the, the prompt here changed, so we're, we're in py Python. Now, before we can use memcache, we need to import it. So we're going to say import, and it's memcache with no D. So now we should be able to use it. Uh, if we say MC, we're going to set a variable called MC and set it to memcache.client. All right, now the client we're going to put in here in some brackets. We'll say 127.0.0.1. And it's going to be at port 11211. And then we're going to set another parameter here. We're going to set debug equal to zero. All right, so now we should have this client that we can work with. So now we can get and set values. So let's do mc.set. Let's set, um, we'll say, greet. And we'll set that to hello world. Okay, so we get true back, so that should be set. Now to get it, we'll say mc.get greet, and we get hello world. So let's make sure that we can access this from Telnet or from other places. Ah localhost 11211 okay so we'll say get greet and there it is hello world all right so you can see that memcache can be used across your system in different languages different clients it all goes and uh, receives from the same place all right let's set another value we'll say mc.set and I want this to be a number. We'll set num to, say, 40. All right, and then we should be able to use mc.anchor. And we'll pass in here num. 
and that gives us 41. We can also do Decker gives us back 40. All right. Uh, if we want to delete, we can do MC dot delete and pass in num. Okay. Now if we do MC dot get num, that should be gone. All right. Now we can also set multiple key value pairs. If we do MC dot set underscore multi. So in here, let's pass in an object and we'll say name John Doe email and age 35. Whoops, what did I do? Name email is not defined. Uh, oh, I forgot the um, quotes. Okay, that needs quotes and age also needs quotes. Okay, so we can uh, we can get individual values from this now if we say MC dot get name that gives us John Doe. Now we can also get multiple values with MC dot get multi. And what we want to do here is pass in an array. We'll say name, email, and age. And that gives us all three. Now we can also set a variable to this get multi. So let's say uh, we want to set person equals that. Oops. Person equals and then the get multi. And then let's do person dot keys. And that gives us the keys. We can get the values as well. Whoops, not value, values. And that gives us all the values. And of course, we can get the individual values if we say person name. That gives us John Doe. All right, we can also delete multiple values. So if we say MC dot delete underscore multi and we pass in an array, let's do email and age. And then we'll try to get um, MC dot get age and that's gone. But name should still be there because we didn't delete that John Doe. All right, and then if we want to get rid of everything, we can say MC dot flush underscore all, and that's a function. Okay, so now we shouldn't have anything. If we say get or MC dot get name, that should be gone. All right, so that's the Python interface. Very simple. We only used it in the command line here, but of course you can use it in a Python script inside of a file. All right, so let's get out of this. And the last thing I want to do is show you how to use it with PHP. So we first want to install an Apache server, which is really easy. We're just going to say sudo apt-get install. And it's going to be Apache 2. Okay, we'll say yes. So if we go and we open up our browser and go to HTTP localhost, you should see an Apache start page. So now let's install uh, PHP. I'm going to clear that out and say sudo apt to get install. And we want uh, PHP 7.0. We also want the Apache 2 mods, so we want to say lib Apache 2-mod-php 7.0. All right, so now that those are installed, let's, um, let's restart Apache with slash etc init.d slash Apache 2 
restart. All right, so we'll clear that out. And now what we want to do is navigate to our host folder. So I'm going to go CD slash var slash www slash html all right and then from here we're going to uh, make a directory and we'll call it memc oh permission denied we need to use sudo okay and then we want to give permission to the current user for that directory so let's do uh, sudo chown then your username and then the folder name which is memc all right so now let's cd into that folder and we're going to create a file called index.php so now if we go over here and we go to localhost slash memc that's showing the index file so let's open that in the file browser here we'll go to let's see computer var www html and then memc and there's our file all right so we'll just open it with gedit and we're going to add in our php okay now oh we need to install the php memcache module so we're going to say sudo apt get install php dash memcache with no d just php memcache all right so let's go back to our script and we're going to create a variable called mc and set it to new memcache and then we should be able to connect mc connect and let's pass in our host, which is 127.0.0.1. And it's at port 11211. All right, so now we should be able to add, uh, add key value pairs. Let's try it. We'll say MC add. And let's add, let's say username and we'll just say dev user and then we'll just do echo working all right so let's save that and reload whoops what happened all right i think we need to just restart apache All right, so we're just going to run that. Okay, let's go back here. And there we go. It says working. So hopefully it worked. Let's go to our Telnet terminal. And we're going to say get uh, username. And there it is, dev user. So we can now set values through our PHP script. And we should be able to get them as well. So let's comment that out. And let's echo MC get username. Save it, reload, and we get dev user. So now that we know that this is working, let's um, minimize this. And what I want to do is I want to cache a web page okay so we're gonna create in here a folder called ink for include files and let's create a new document and we're gonna call this mypage.php okay we'll open that up oops we'll open that up with gedit and this is just gonna be an HTML page put in a head okay we'll put a title we'll just say my page and then a body all 
this isn't a very good editor. <laughs> and let's put an h1 and we'll just say my page. All right, so we have this HTML page or this PHP page with HTML. And we want to cache it. So let's uh, let's get rid of this right here. And hopefully you guys can see that. Maybe I should make this a little bigger. Fonts. There we go. All right, so let's... Uh, what do I want to do here? Let's say my page. And we're going to set this to MC get and the key is going to be my page dot php all right now we want to test for that we're going to say if oh, this editor sucks let's say if my page and it's going to have an else Okay, so if my page, then we're just going to echo out the value of my page. All right, but if it's not there, then we're going to echo out not cached. And let's see, we're going to say file name equals ink slash my page dot php and we need a handle and we're going to use the f open function and we'll pass in the file name and we want this to be read mode okay then we want the contents so we set that to f read pass in the handle and then we're going to say uh, file size and we're going to wrap the file name all right so that should be able to get the contents of the page all right so if we say echo contents let's go ahead and save that and reload all right so we're getting the my page now notice it says not cached so that means that this is running so this is not set. So what we want to do is we want to set this. We want to grab the contents of this page and put it inside of this this key value pair. All right, so that we can access this we can access it from the cache and not from the file system. Okay, which makes it much quicker. So instead of just echoing out this contents, what we'll do is we're going to set it. We'll say mc set And we want to set the key, which is going to be my page oops, dot PHP. And then the value is going to be that contents. That's going to be the value. And then the flags will be zero. And let's set it for 30 seconds. Okay, it'll be cached for 30 seconds. And then we just want to echo it. We can say echo MC get and pass in my page.php all right so let's go ahead and save that and reload not cached if i reload again now we're not seeing the not cached so it's now getting it from memcached all right and it'll keep it'll keep it cached for 30 seconds after the 30 seconds is up it'll it'll go away but if we reload again it'll get stored again all right so it'll keep caching it and this will increase the, um, or I'm sorry, decrease the, the, the load time of the page because it's coming from cache, not from the file system. All right, so let's see. If we reload, you'll see it's not cached because it's been 30 seconds. Reload again, and it gets cached. All right, so that's just a very, very simple example on a very small scale. I mean, we're not going to be able to see the difference here, but if we're working with larger pages with more files, um, this can this can be helpful all right and it just gives you an idea of how memcached works with php all right so we're going to go ahead and stop here and i hope you guys 
could follow along with this. I know it wasn't the, the best video in the world, but uh, hopefully you learned a little something, and thanks for watching.